I'm going with the underdogs. And I'm going to explain why in just a second. But the Pacers are going to win this series in seven. I know what the Celtics are doing. I know the Celtics have a lot of hype. Nobody wants to see the Pacers in the finals, which is true. Um, a lot of people were talking about, like, you know, it, it's going to be a boring finals if the Pacers go. Well, I'm ready for it to be a boring finals because I think the Pacers are going to win just because they got the bench support, they got the size advantage, and they play better basketball, and they've been playing better basketball all postseason than what we've been seeing from the Boston Celtics. So I'm siding with the Pacers to win. And it's something about the Celtics. Yeah, they got the big names. They got the hype. They got the star players. They got the stardom and all of that stuff right now. But it's just really something about them that's giving fraudulent, bro. The Celtics have been looking real, real fraudulent lately. They don't play like a championship team when I'm watching them play. They just so happen to be the team with all the star power. The only team with star power left in the damn Eastern Conference, for real. But since the playoffs started, Celtics, they look like a completely different team. And this is not in a good way. Regular season, they were dominant. They were smacking teams left and right. They were playing consistent. But now we have not seen that at all from the stars on this team. And even just as a unit, we have not seen that. Of the 12 games they played this postseason, you can count on one hand how many flawless games you've seen from the Boston Celtics. It's not many of them. Jason Tatum, he's only shot over 50% once this entire postseason. Jalen Brown, he's been shaky back and forth, kind of giving you buckets, and then he'll fall back. He's been shaky all playoffs as well. They've really been getting carried by Derek White and Drew Holiday, Al Horford. This Celtics team, they've been getting carried by their role guys. If it wasn't for Derek White, Drew Holiday, and Al Horford being as consistent as they've been in these past few uh, series that they played in the playoffs... The Celtics already would have been in trouble. They wouldn't have made it this far. And they didn't win game one because they were just a better team against the Pacers. That wasn't the case. The Pacers literally gave that game away. They sold and they ended up losing. But they had full control over the Boston Celtics all game in that game one. Similar to the Knicks, the Knicks had the momentum and they had the crowd, but the Pacers had control of how the game was played. They played at the Pacers' pace. And in game one, I've seen that they played at the Pacers' pace. At the Pacers pace. In game two with the Celtics, it's a little bit different. We still see the Pacers playing foul. They, they, they turning the ball over. They're, they're committing these loose turnovers. They're making these silly fouls. All of these stuff like that is it's going to come back to haunt them, but ultimately... I think they'll clean it up because they cleaned it up in a previous series against the Knicks. And I think they'll clean it up again against the Celtics. And Celtics ain't been playing dominant where it's just a, a, a type of play where you have to respect it. No, you ain't been seeing that from the Celtics. And I think ultimately they're going to need Porzingis back because there's a size uh, advantage that the Pacers have here. Sayakum and, and um, Turner, like, man, that, that's a problem for the Celtics. And I think above all, before it gets too late, Celtics really, really going to need Porzingis back. I know it was rumored he may come back by game four, which would be super helpful for them. But if, if he's not back by game four, I think that's when we'll really see this series turn, man. But ultimately, I'm going with the Pacers to win this series in seven. I know it's odd. I know.